Okay, we're here live at Dell World. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. This is theCUBE, our flagship program at SiliconAngle.tv. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. And we've got a great segment on this one with IDC to share a market research perspective. IDC is the worldwide leader in, in market research data in the enterprise. Uh, again, I'm John Furrier, I'm here with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with Crawford Del Pret, who's the executive vice president and chief research officer worldwide at, at IDC, friend of mine. Crawford, welcome. Thanks a lot, good to see you. Yeah, so, uh, Hey Welcome so to yeah. the Cube. Yeah, IDC in the Cube. We yeah, love it. it feels we great love, to be we here. love it. We, the Cube is about extracting the signal from the noise. So you guys are are doing that with IDC. You guys are number one worldwide research firm on market share. Um, all the top enterprise clients. You have them all. What is what do the numbers tell you right now? Obviously, everyone's talking about transformation. The data center, no no doubt, is in a transformation. The consumer convergence, web is bubbling. Convergence. What, what, what's going on? Give us a, give us a view of. What, how you're looking at the research and how does it all shake out? Sure, so, so uh, what's, what, what's interesting about the, about the market today is that you know, the market historically has been a market that's been waking up every morning, growing 10, 12, 15% as, as you well know. That's no longer the case, right? We're going to struggle in the market this year to see anywhere between 5 and 7% revenue growth overall. Um, what you're seeing is an industry that's sort of growing up and going from growing very, very rapidly to not growing so rapidly. So we're seeing convergence, we're seeing consolidation, we're seeing suppliers that, um, you know, are, again, it's, you know, they have to work harder, so that means going into uncharted territories, that means expanding into markets that maybe are adjacent to where you are. It's nothing is more apparent than Dell's strategy in terms of doing that. I mean, three years ago, uh, they bought Perot Systems to expand into a very, very large, but relatively slow growth services business. Um, they bought, you know, Compellent. They bought um, uh, Wise. You know, Force. they bought they bought they bought many Force many 10, companies. Right. They bought 10. Force Ten. They bought Quest. They bought many many companies to sort of expand their footprint beyond where they are today. This is what happens, right? You know, if you can't if you can't grow just by showing up, you got to grow by looking left and looking right. All right, so let's talk about the growth in terms of like um, in the enterprise. So we had Tarkin Maynard on, who came in through the Wise acquisition. We also had the CIO from uh, ex CIO from uh, State Street Bank. And they talk about this line. Below the line is all run the operations. Yep. Budgets are all focused on there. Above the line is the innovation yep. or top line revenue uh, projects. Everyone wants to invest in the top line, but wh where are we in that on that investment? What's the what's the IT landscape look like in terms of who, what's going on? Is it more just operational? Do you have yeah, any sure. To that? Yeah, so, so a little bit of background. Um, so I spend about a third of my time um, out there talking to IT leaders, um, running our end user business. So I, you know, I've been all around the world in the last two years talking to IT leaders. And I kind of throw the CIOs and, and senior leadership of, 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 of IT organizations into two categories, right? Ones that are looking for the attaboy for cutting their expenses a percent of revenue, and ones that are really trying to grow the business. And the first group is very interesting, because the first group, you can sort of see where the movie ends, right? I mean, eventually, you know, the, 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 last, the last pink slip, you know, kind of goes to you. Right, yeah. The race to zero. Right, the race to zero, exactly. So it's, 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 it's a race to the bottom. The other group is really struggling with how do they have that conversation around growing the line of around helping the line of business grow. How do you transform the business by enabling technology? But what's tough is that the technology they've been touching for so many years is the infrastructure guts of the organization, and that is the stuff that's really being delegated lower in the organization to basically say, yeah, you know, spin up another server, buy some more gear, buy some more storage. But you know, if we're going to think about the new way to transform our retail experience, that's going to come from the line of business. So really, you know, helping the line of business transform But that's where the grow, action is, right? That's absolutely where the action is. What IT leaders need to figure out is, how do you start having that conversation? How do you start being a part of that's those That's why meetings? their services business is booming, right? That's exactly why services is booming. That's also why Dell wants to move to the cloud. That's why Dell wants to get people, you know, sort of take more cost out, simplify all the stuff that, you know, the customer can no longer be the systems integrator. You know, yeah. the customer has to have someone do that for them so they can focus on growth. So Dell's strategy is very fascinating that way let's, because they're moving let's, about Let's talk directions. about the competition. Dell, HP, and we'll throw Cisco in there because you, know, you talk about you know, yep. acquisition sure. and you know, looking left and looking right. You know, they've been looking yeah, yeah. <laughs> all 360, uh, Cisco has been. But let's talk about like, how the world's changing. With virtualization, you're seeing footprints change, power and cool, we saw a two lane example on the keynote, and yeah. a variety of other you know, marketing sticks that these guys have. Truly, how do you measure market share? I mean, I'm not a market research guy, but like, it seems like, are they rearranging the deck chairs? By look, at we had ports here, we have shares of units. <laughs> how do you measure units? How do you measure with virtualization? If the footprint's going down, yeah. is, can the shares still go up? <laughs> sure. Because you sure. guys are, have measured it traditionally, 
ports, servers, shipments, and now, right. now you're in this virtualization kind of gray area. Yeah. How do you so, guys look so, at that? So when you start looking at virtualization, right, what you really want to look at is the, 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 a, a, a few aspects, right? You can survey and try to figure out how many virtual servers are someone running off of a specific server and try to make some estimates on that. You can also look at instances of virtualization. So basically, how many instances of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a specific piece of software are there, and then try to you know, size the market around that software. But um, you know, it is, it is much more end user driven. It's much more demand side. It's not so much supply side because quite frankly, a lot of these virtualization vendors, they ship the software, but they don't know how much it's kind of turned on and how much, how much it's being used. You know, if you ran a Parallels on your, on, on your Mac right there, are you running Windows or are you running, are you running Mac OS? You know, which, which one are you running? Well, you got to figure out, you know, they're both kind of there, which one's being used. All right, so let's talk about units, like Cisco. Yeah. Cisco, HP, and Dell. Yeah. They all claim to be number one in yeah. servers. That's the thing, Robert. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> claims in using your data, because they slice it and dice yep. it in a different way, they yep. all claim to be gaining share yep. on their competitors. So right, right. Is, and now, as a group, the whales, we yep. call them the whales. Yeah, 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 you know, sure. It's like an oligopoly, yeah, right? Yeah, you sure. know, these people who can try to control the market. Are the whales gaining share mm -hmm. uh, as, yeah. a, as, a, as a group? Yeah, so, so as a group, the market continues to consolidate, right? And those whales are gaining share. So Cisco, the little lily pad they stand on, right, <laughs> is, is a big lily pad, but when you compare it to servers and when you compare it to, to storage, those are also big opportunities. They can only gain share in those two markets because of, because of networking. HP, who continues to gain, I think they're up around 11% in terms of total networking share, has been growing like crazy off the pro broker line, taking that out of, um, of Cisco primarily, and, and, and again, Juniper and, and, and some other folks. Dell, on the other hand, is you know, gaining it across uh, uh, each of those three markets, more so in servers than any other. And not um, networking, and, and, and they're, they're going to try to do networking, although, although they have some holes, right? They don't have core routing, right? They, right. they have, they have uh, some, some things around the edges, but they do have sort of a top of the rack switch that they can. And they had nothing before. And so, and so again, off a very, very small base, they're going to continue to grow. But you know, make no mistake, and then, and then in storage, you know, Dell's got you know, some more work to do to kind of work out their, their, their product lines, and, and uh, you know, we saw some changes last week yep. in terms of the storage <laughs> yeah, leadership. Sure. So, so they're going to be making some changes to try to grow off their base. But you know, it is, it's, it's definitely kind of what sort of porthole are you looking through, but in the aggregate, yes, the whales are gaining share, um, the strong are getting stronger, stronger, and that tends to be what happens in consolidating markets. Do you see, do you see the conversion infrastructure being just one big bucket? Because, you know, we were just talking to Michael Dell yesterday, and then, you know, we've been talking to some of the top Intel people, yeah. um, and you're seeing some reorganization, obviously Intel storage group's now part of the data center group, yeah. and who gets credit for the sales, is it the server, storage, everything's kind of being bundled now with Flash, it's more <laughs> server, right. Michael Dell said it's bolted up to the servers, I mean, so you can't say, oh, storage market share, but it's in the servers. So, are you just going to bucket that into yeah, one, so, one so thing? Yeah, so Michael Tell, you know, it's funny, uh, you know, I had a conversation with him uh, just yesterday, and he was, he was he, we, were, we were having a conversation around the industry, and he was recounting some things around, um, you know, when he, when he sat there and looked at a PC motherboard, right? He saw the industry. You know, back back yeah, in right. back, back in back in the early days, literally yeah. you could see it like like you know, look, video, you know, you know, the, there's 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 Cirrus Logic Zitto, doing sound. There's Emulex, there's, 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 Emulex, there's, there's and mm -hmm. he literally could see the industry as he yes. laid it out. And guess what? Pull out a motherboard today, you see just a couple of chips left, right? You know, you don't you don't see the scuzzy controller. You could also you measure the, the units ET. too. You can say here's the here's a bar chart of shipments. <laughs> right on, you know? right on. You could you, you could see the industry consolidate Tear on that down. board. The data center is a perfect metaphor for that. The same thing is happening, right? You used to open up a data center and you would see the industry yeah. laid, out across, the rack, you uh, know? Uh, laid out across the floor. That's now all starting to come together in this converged infrastructure, and I promise you, we'll be talking a hell of a lot less about these piece parts eight years from now in this converged infrastructure. We'll be talking about just an over an integrated data center. So I go back to my point, the customer can't be the integrator. So let's yeah. talk about Dell a little bit. So Crawford, you and I spent a lot of time on Wall Street. <laughs> uh, Dell's a, you know, nearly uh, about a $60 billion company with a less than $20 billion market market yep. cap now, yep. and, uh, and 11 billion of that is in cash. Yep. So that can't make Michael Dell happy, obviously. So what's your prognosis for Dell? Obviously they're undergoing this huge transformation. Uh, are you op optimistic, pessimistic, yeah. neutral? Yeah, so I've been very, very neutral, right? Because again, it's, it's, it's you, know, as, you know, as you and I know, st studying business models over the years, this is a kind of an interesting business model Dell has because it requires a tremendous amount of cash to kind of buy all the components. So you have a lot of cash, but it, but it, it re required a lot to be, to be kind of fed. Having said that, going forward, they haven't been getting the valuation for the cash flow that they generate, and they do generate a tremendous amount of cash flow. And it really comes down to something that was said uh, in, in the keynote, which is profit pools. Right, they have to go take share from profit pools that are larger than the ones they currently swim in. And that means going after services, and, and really high value services. It means going after the software business, because 
the, what Dell has is an infinitely scalable business model. So to answer your question directly, I was neutral and I'm getting a lot more positive as they take this scale, this business model that scales so well and applies it to more profitable segments of the industry. The problem is, and it's, you know, I, I was just tweeting about it, they're telling an evolutionary story, but the IT leaders I talk to still think of these guys as a piece parts gear supplier. They don't think of them as someone who can come in and help me, tra again, transform my retail experience or transform my channel experience. They think of them as, you go buy a server. And you know, oh, okay, I'll go on the website and buy a server. So, so thinking about Dell differently is really what they have to start getting customers Are to Are you do. saying that they're not buying the end-to-end -end strategy or they're not, uh, Dell, Dell is not seen as a you know, consultative partner like a Deloitte or uh, Yeah, what, or, what I'm seeing is that, that, that outside of the very deep relationships that Perot had, you know, so they can sort of compete with an Accenture or someone yeah, yeah, like right. that, they're not viewed that way. So it's not really about buying the story, it's about not hearing the story. You know, because Dell is still on everyone's desktop and Dell is still on everyone's server rack. So you're so. saying Dell's scale is a competitive weapon. So it's obvious, I mean, you observe Dell, they, it's almost like they refuse to, yep. to shrink. Yeah. So they're using that as a competitive weapon and trying to drive that 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 supply chain advantage into the enterprise. That's Absolutely. The and, and, and and how do you start to do that? So I was just having a conversation with the head of, uh, of cloud computing at Dell just, just before I came over here, and he was talking about, you know, on the server page where the person in the in the in the in the you know clear for credit small or medium business at Dell is buying a server, there's a banner now, and there will ultimately be a button to say, do you want to do that in the cloud? You know, and give us your credit card and, and move that into the cloud. That's using the weapon and applying it, the model, to cloud computing. Yeah. So, what do you make of this whole ODM trend? I mean, we, we yeah, used yeah. to follow disk drives, right? Yeah, yeah, it reminds yeah. me of some of those days. Um, you know, peop people, a lot of people poo-poo it, you yep. know, but you see, they seem to be getting some traction, and ODMs come and go, but. What's your take on that whole? Thing? Yeah, so the uh, so 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 the ODM trend is fascinating to me. I don't view them as ankle biters. I view them as this is a real, real deal, right? This is the real yeah. deal. And let me tell you, if you've been to Taiwan, which I know you've been to Asia, I'm assuming it's me you have in your in your career, John. You know these guys have major factories, and and you know you look at what some of those, as HP calls them, the hyperscale segment. They want a board, they want a drive, they want a connector. They oh they don't want it to blow up, but they know eventually it will blow up, and when it does, they want to swap another one out. So this is a very scary trend because it's a classically disruptive trend where the pieces of it are going to take a while for it to get moving, but once it gets moving, it's a strain, it's going to be a train that's going to be very hard to so stop. So do you think Dell's, to our earlier point of the discussion around scale, can Dell compete with those guys? Because they're obviously a huge you know, supplier to the cloud. Yeah. Uh, can they compete <coughs> on, on cost with those guys? You know, um, I, I've asked that question to a number of Dell executives. They believe that they are they that they can compete in the segments where they have to compete for that kind of business. And I think that I have no reason to believe that's not true. The question is, as those guys get massive scale and get larger and larger and larger, do they start adding features to their products? Do they start expanding their products such that you know, they can start doing business directly with American Express or doing business directly with Texaco? Right now, um, it's hard to kind of see that. So what you have is you know, sort of a world where the hosters are in the, in the cloud guys, infrastructure guys are doing business with them, nobody kind of else is. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think we're going to be there for quite some time, but it's a trend to absolutely watch. Crawford, one of the things that we look at Dell, we look at numbers, obviously, in the on the Desktops yep. are fine. His workstation's still out there. It's you know nice and humming along. Uh, mobile, which is their notebooks and below, I'm getting crushed, right? Yep. You know, so anything over two thousand dollars, Apple's dominating yep. that marketplace on just for, for, on PCs. But underneath, you got mobile. You have Android, Windows 8. We're calling it a jump ball. How do you see Windows 8 outlook? Um, in terms of that low-end tablets. Yep. You know, tablets are eating away at the notebook market, yep. and yeah. you got BYOD, yeah. that's yeah. not going to help yeah. if Android's there. So what's your, what's your yeah. take on so, that? <clears throat> so, uh, uh, a little perspective on this. Um, so, as Michael said today, you know, PCs are an industry where 400 million units, you know, ship a year. Uh, you know, I saw a tweet from one of our competitors the other day, uh, where you know they they talked about uh, PCs uh, being irrelevant. I, I, I think that's just laughable. Yeah, it's right. it I mean, laughable. It, it's laughable. I mean, I mean, you think about a lean forward, create kind of form personal factor. Personal computer. Yeah, the yeah. personal. And I, I'll give anybody the that's opportunity a to go ahead and, and, and go ahead and create something <laughs> though on on a uh, on, on a tablet, and it's it's hard it's yeah. hard to do. It's it's not as easy. What we're finding in PCs is PCs are going to find a bottom. They're going to find a, a, a level where they will then ultimately grow off of. Um, I use Windows 8, I, I use the early one all summer long. Um, it has got some advantages, right? It's got some disadvantages, but ultimately, there's a great piece written recently about, you know, Microsoft basically every other release having problems and then fixing them and having problems. And guess what? Windows 7 was a rock and release. Windows 8, not so much. It might might have some problems. They might end up doing it much better with sort of a service pack two on, on Windows 8. But I am one that believes the PC has a very, very, very long life. And what you're seeing is the melting of form factors. There 
there is a computer in your pocket. There is a computer that you're reading on, and there's a computer that you're going to continue to create on. It's really about outcomes, and it's about the job that you want to get done. But also, we were having a debate earlier amongst the Silicon Angle team around, you know, say we have some window purists. Uh, you know, I used to be one, yeah. and I still love Windows, but I don't really use it much anymore, I got Mac. But, but the OS was stable back in the 90s when yeah. you had the, a lot of churn and competition on, on hardware, for example. So differentiation was supply chain, yeah. build to order, reliability, yeah. Windows was dead. Now you got Android yeah. in the low end. So, you know, that's an issue for, so, for people who want to so, so yeah, yeah. So, so, so it is an issue, right? And and, and people will continue to use Android. I I, I use Android all the time. Um, you know, it starts to make you wonder if the asset of Microsoft, you know, if it isn't sedimenting, is the oper are the operating systems sort of commoditizing? And the next layer you're going to move to is. Office, office fidelity, um, and will Microsoft start leveraging office fidelity as a differentiator, and you can get a really great set of office fidelity between all your devices, if you're using Windows phones, if you're using Windows PCs, and if you're using, um, uh, you know, again, a Windows-enabled kind of tablet situation. I'm not suggesting that Apple, you know, Apple's done a fantastic job. Android is, you know, the wild, wild west in terms of applications. You know, yeah. you see certain studies where, you know, over, you know, I, th I think the number was over 40% of the uh, of the of the apps on the Android store are tracking you or, or have some level of spyware or malicious you know wear there. Yeah, so you know you start saying to yourself, they have a lot of market share. There's a lot of security issues. There's a lot, a lot of security of issues. Weirdness. There's a lot of there's a, there's, 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 there's a lot of uh, you know things weirdness. that happen there. We we'll call it weirdness, John. <laughs> but the but the point the point is that if you know again there's going to be a role for Windows 8 yeah. um, going forward. Yeah, well, that's certainly betting the ranch on Windows 8. Not one word of Android here at Dell World. Yeah, and again they do have you know Dell. I have to give Dell credit of all the. PC suppliers, um, kind of, that are that are huge market share leaders. These guys have done a tremendous amount of experimentation. They really have. You know, Acer's done some as well. But these guys, you know, they with the Streak and with uh, Windows phones and with uh, different di different Android-based devices. Uh, a, a lot of interesting stuff. So, what's your take on HP? Obviously, we're digging into them as well. Obje <laughs> Autonomy acquisition, you know, embarrassment, black eye aside. Yep. They're trying to integrate autonomy into the organization with big data. They have that same kind of message. I mean, Marius Haas came from HP. Yeah. He did the three com deal. Yep. Good good score by Michael Dell to get Marius. But where do, you know, how do you rate HP right <laughs> now as as the alternative to Dell in this market? Yeah, so look, HP has got you know some tremendous issues that they're dealing with right now. I mean, you know, to say the least. Um, the company is uh, right now, I think, you know, really focused on being able to stabilize their story. You know, what I find fascinating about the Android, about sorry, pardon me, the autonomy uh, situation is, yeah, they spent 11 billion dollars on it. Yeah, they've they could have had it too. Okay, whatever. No, no, the, well, <laughs> well, they've 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 written it down. But, but but the bottom line is, it's not as if that asset isn't there. It's not as if they can't kind of leverage that asset. No, they, they are, right? They right, are. and they are. And, and, and information yeah. management is, 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 is one of Meg's you know, key, key strategies. I think that the problem is, you know, as one you know, CIO said to me, you, know, you, you, kinda, you, know, you turn the jack-in-the-box and you don't know when it's going to go off and you don't know what's going to come out of the jack-in-the-box next. You know? I mean, because you know, this was supposed to be a quiet year of them kind of getting things under control and it hasn't turned out that way. You know, they have, you know, now, now it's the autonomy kind of thing that's cropped up. I think that it's all about stability and it's all about execution more than ever at Hewlett Packard. Yeah. And if they can do that, then I'll go back to what I said. You know, people look at the debt situation at HP. The debt situation at HP is big. However, go look at the amount of cash. Yeah, they back of they, they, balance they threw, sheet issues. Threw, I mean, you got, you know. They threw $4.1 billion in cash last quarter in a pretty average yeah, quarter. over 10 in a year. So, exactly. so they're executing exactly. somewhere. They, they, well, they're, they, 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 every day, right? I mean, the printer business They actually is, have a business that's yeah. producing cash. <laughs> now, yeah. a declining market, but they have leverage. Well, they, they, have, they have tremendous leverage, but if they can get it under control, they can have a base to grow off of. Yeah. But they have competitors IBM that are, was running out of money when they did their turnaround. I mean, so, so was Apple. Yeah, so they yeah. turned around. So, yeah. so I mean, so so the but, but the point is, what's changing now is that they have to be very careful about the sentiment in their customer base because now customers are starting to scratch their head and say, you know, you don't know what's coming next, and and it's it, you know uh, you know buying servers from HP or buying storage from HP is one thing, but engaging with them around a sophisticated services engagement. It's a little bit different, and I think that's where they really have to stabilize the ship in order to get those engaged. Crawford Del Pret from IDC. Last word before we uh, break this segment. Final words to the audience around what is happening at Dell World. What's the big takeaway from you and IDC here on the ground from yeah, your team? Yeah, sure, sure. So um, you know, again, this is a this is a great show. I mean, we have I don't know the exact numbers, but it's thousands of people. Um, it's really, it's the evolution of Dell, right? It's 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 the company is adding functionality. The company is adding new disciplines. The company is really not the Dell that I think a lot of people think they are. And I just, I would say, you know, you should invest some time if you're an IT leader to come down and really spend some time with this company because I think you're going to have your eyes open to some different characteristics okay. and different fit uh, This is theCUBE, Crawford Del Pre from IDC. We love to have research analysts on here, especially the chief research analyst at IDC. We got Dave Vellante, uh, chief analyst at wikibon.org. We love it, theCUBE loves to extract the signal. And you got the analysts here uh, on the ground. 
uh, poking holes at everything, looking under every rock. Obviously a huge market transformation in the enterprise, IT convergence, consumerization, bring your own device work, data center of the future, modern infrastructure, all great stuff here happening at Dell World and we'll see how it does. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. First time on theCUBE, baby.